since our first church invited us in May 2016, um, we have been invited or invited ourselves 30 other places. <laughs> Some of you know how that works. Um, and we have never been more excited to go any of those places than we are to be with you guys here this morning. In our home church among family, sharing with you guys our call to and our passion for Cambodia. We're humbled by this opportunity. As Pastor John said, we are World Gospel Mission's first missionaries to Cambodia. Some of you know uh, a little bit of our story already. Uh, you know that Titus and I grew up on opposite sides of the world in very different cultures and with very different religious experiences. But in both of our lives, in both of our stories, we found God to be real, powerful, and loving. Less than 3% of Cambodians know this God. From 1975 to 1979, the Cambodian people brutally suffered under a communist group known as the Khmer Rouge. During those five years, men, women, and children were forced into very hard labor under dangerous working conditions and only given a small amount of rice and water to survive each day. Parents watched their children suffer and starve. Children watched their parents be killed. Siblings were separated and often never reunited. These years of pain and suffering have left very deep scars on the hearts and the skin of those who survived the Khmer Rouge and the generations after them. It's my first exposure to this piece of Cambodia's history. The Lord has laid Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 on my heart. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. This is our prayer for the Cambodian people. By the end of the Khmer Rouge in 1979, 80% of Cambodian believers had been martyred. From just 2,000 remaining Christians at that time, the evangelical church in Cambodia has grown to more than 200,000 believers today, yet they are still less than 3% of the population. The needs for evangelism and church planting in this war-ravaged country remain great. 95% of Cambodians are Buddhist. That 95% includes our family, Titus's parents, younger brothers, nephews, cousins, grandma, all of them, Buddhist. We cannot sit back when so many Cambodians do not know Jesus. No one except Titus or I have ever tried to evangelize his family. No one except Titus or I have ever spoken the sweet name Jesus. And there are others. 75% of Cambodia is considered unreached. Unreached is a term that refers to a people group that has no local Christian influence to spread the gospel. 75% unreached. That means 75% of Cambodia will never hear the name or message of Jesus Christ unless someone goes to them. I already told you that we've been 30 other places before coming here, and everywhere we go, we share with them these statistics. And our hearts only ache more because we're here, and they're there, still living their lives without Jesus. In Cambodia, life is hard. It's a poor and sinful country damaged by war, by genocide, by corruption. I've not experienced life like that. I do not know poverty. I do not know devastation. I do not know abandonment or abuse. But I do know grace. I do know healing. I do know reconciliation. And that's the message that we're taking with us to these people. Thank you for opening your hearts as we share our passion for and our calling to Cambodia. And thank you for walking with us on this journey.
Good morning. Can you see me? <laughs> uh, my name is John Noel Titus Rumdeng. I'm originally from Cambodia, as you all can tell. I've been living in the United States for five and a half years, and I understand that many of you still do not understand my broken English, right? Uh, just in case you do not understand me, don't be panicked. Just let me know. And I speak in my language. <laughs> no, I bring, with me, I bring with me a translator. My translator is the PowerPoint slideshow. And the unique thing is that it shows you everything that matches exactly with my sermon note here. So just ignore me that I'm not existed and look at the slides. Before I start, uh, start sharing our heart for Cambodia, allow me to just say thank you to all of you. Thank you for raising me up as your church family, and thank you for raising, my, raising me up as your own family. Uh, many of you have mentored me, have, many of you have helped me when I needed you the most, and many of you have spoken Spanish to me. Gracias. <laughs> I also want you to know that I am one of the fruits of the works of your missionaries that you have sent to Cambodia. The fruits that you have never met or seen before. The reality is that all of you, each one of you, have, have praying for my life, have invested for my life, in my life, even long before we have known each other, even long before we have known each other, or long before I became a Christian. Brothers and sisters, don't you all like the uh, mission months in broke heaven? I want you to know that your prayers and your financial support to missionaries change the life of the people that you have never met. Your prayers and your financial support to missionaries produce fruits. Isn't that amazing? Thank you for sending missionaries to my country and to around the world. Today, I believe that there, there are thousands more fruits, there are a million more fruits that want to be here and say thank you for sending missionaries, missionaries to my country. Without them, there is no way I can hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And without them, I personally will still live in the darkness of sin. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for the privilege to be called your sons and your daughters. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus, we ask for your Holy Spirit and your presence. Stay upon us right now, O God. Open our hearts, op open our minds, and open our eyes. To see that your work has to be done. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you take away all the sickness right now. I pray, you, I pray that you touch each one of us, of us here, O oh God. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you take away all the lunch plan so that we can give this time to you. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I did not have a privilege to grow up in a Christian home or in a Christian country. In fact, I was born in a family that has two religions. My father's side is Catholic and my mother's side is Buddhist. So since I was young, I went to both the Catholic Church and the Buddhist temple. But I never went to a Protestant church. Until one day, one of my friends invited me to go to the church and I agreed to go with him. Starting from the Sunday, I went to the church by myself. I remember exactly that Sunday the pastor preached, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Immediately, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and convicted me that I am a sinner and only the blood of Jesus Christ can, do, can, uh, can redeem me, can make my heart new again. Because there is no salvation and forgiveness in Buddhist religion. Before I became a Christian, I was an alcoholic, I was a burglar, and I was a gambler, and I have tried a lot of times to be a new person, to be a changed person. I shaved my head one time as a symbol of regrets. As you all can tell, there's always hair on my head. 
I swore to many gods, the god of my ancestors. I wanted to be a changed person. I wanted to be a new person. Later on, when I became a follower of Jesus Christ, I realized that I cannot change myself. I cannot save myself. But the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Doesn't matter how hard I try. Doesn't matter how hard we try. We are all sinners. And that sinners cannot save sinners. And that sinners cannot change sinners. Nobody on this earth have the ability to save us from our sins. Nobody on this earth have the ability to save us from our wickedness. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can purify my heart, our heart, and make it new again. Because He is the perfect, holy, and only one true God. And that is the core message that we want to bring back to Cambodia. We want the Cambodian people to know that religious belief cannot save them from their sins. We want them to know that money cannot save them from their sins. We want them to know that education cannot save them from their sins. Doing good things or charity cannot save them from their sins. Living a solitary life, separating yourself from the community of people. Living in a triangle or forest cannot save them from their sins. God's grace alone can save them from their sins. And God's grace alone can bring them back to the Father. And that is my heart. My heart is that I want to bring my people, ultimately God's lost people, back to the Father. I can see that you look at the screens, not listening to me. <laughs> if you have a Bible with you, please turn it to Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. One of the most popular uh, passages in the Bible. Open your Bible into Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. Allow me to share with you one of my cultures. One of my cultures is that after a pastor or a preacher uh, tell the congregation to open the Bible, he pauses a little bit and then he starts to look around. Open your Bible into Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. If you see somebody doesn't open the Bible, he, he changes the tone. Open your Bible. <laughs> into Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. Or shall I say here in America, open your apples. Into Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 to 38. Let's look at verse 36. When he saw the crowds, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Cambodian people are still living in darkness, hopeless, and helpless. The country is 95% Buddhist and less than 3% Christians. And brothers and sisters, when I see that, that is my crowds. When I see the percentage like that, that is my crowd. More than 98% of the Cambodian population do not know Christ yet. I knew immediately that's the crowds I should go. It is our heart and prayer that we want to bring the light of Jesus Christ to the lightless of every corner in Cambodia. We want the Cambodian people to know that in Him, there is still hope. And that hope is still like this. It's still available for them to come. And that hope is still like this, opening wide for them to come. And that in hope, there is forgiveness. And that in hope, there is salvation. And you can not find that kind of hope from anywhere else or from anybody. Find that hope only in Jesus Christ alone. How I long to see my people gathering together like this. Hundreds of people gathering together. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart, with all their minds, with all their soul. Worship the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart, their mind, and their soul. One day. Amen? One day. Our ministry is called All Band Discipleship Planting. Our goal is to reach and disciple the influential people with the living word of the Lord Jesus Christ and transform the way they live their life into the way that God wants them to live their lives. A righteous and a holy life. The Lord has put this group of people in my heart. They are powerful people. They are influential people. But I want to invite you to look at the multiplication perspective. 
Because if we reach the employers, the employers will evangelize to other employers and the employees will listen to them. Because if we reach the educators, the educators will evangelize to other educators and the educators will listen to them. Is there a word for educators? Or students will listen to them. Because if we reach the parents, the parents will evangelize to other parents and the children will listen to them. I intentionally put sick children under the parents because that's the typical family size in Cambodia. We all like to uh, have a big family. But we're not going to have sick children, Joe. <laughs> we're going to have seven. <laughs> in Cambodia, there's a saying like this, the saliva of the influential people are saltier. Yeah, yeah, it sounds gross to me too. But there's a reason why Jesus called us, we are the salt of the earth. And there's a reason why Jesus called us, we are the salt of the earth. Because we have the living word of God in our heart and in our mouth. The word that gives life. The word that transforms life. Our hope and prayer is that 20 years from now, or 40 years from now, or 30 years from now, with the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of God is in us, the 95% Buddhism that we showed you a while ago will be replaced by Christianity. With all my heart, I believe it. I know the God that I believe in. With all my heart, I believe it. I believe that one day when I come back, I'm not going to show you the percentage, 95% Buddhism anymore. But our God is a pow powerful God, mighty full God. He changed my life. He saved my life. He changed your life. He saved your life. And yes, he's still able to change these people's life. His power is limitless and timeless and just. It never expired. And that next time when you see a Cambodian people stand in front of you again, he or she will be able to say that I grew up in a Christian home. And you want to see that day to come. He or she will be able to say that I grew up in a Christian home. And when that day comes, brothers and sisters, May the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be praised. May the name of the Lord Jesus Christ be lifted high. And when that day comes, it's because each one of you have prayed for them. It's because of you, each one of you have invested in them. Number two. Not sure where my number one is, but number two. <laughs> Do not exclude yourself from the mission. Do not exclude yourself from the mission. In verse 38, it says like this, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out more workers. We all like to pray, right? We all like to pray. That is great. That is fantastic. But brothers and sisters, can I call you brothers and sisters? That side, can I call you uncle and aunt? <laughs> Don't just pray and stop going to your crowds. Don't just pray and stop going to your crowds. Pray and go. The more you pray, the more you go. The more you pray, the more power you have. And don't forget this, that you are, you are one of the workers. Go to the crowds that the Lord has put in your life. Go to the crowd that the Lord has revealed to you. And yes, we are prayer warriors. But we are also soldiers who fight for the Lord's kingdom, who proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to those who never heard about him yet and to around the world. This is what I believe. I believe that it doesn't matter where we go or where we are. When you are a follower of Jesus Christ, there should be a crowd like this in your lives. The crowd that convicts you, the crowd that causes you to bow down on your knees every day. Tell the Lord, please send me. Don't just pray that Lord send Pastor Tony to Cambodia. That would be fantastic. 95 degree all year round. Bring the Cambodian people to know the Lord. Have plant churches there. Don't just pray that Lord send Dave Abston to Uganda. He's not here. Don't just let, well, pray that Lord send Dave Abston to Uganda to have our missionaries, Nathan and Jade. Train pastors and leaders there, uh, leaders there. Don't just pray that Lord send that family. 
Don't just pray that Lord send this person. Pray that Lord sent me. Because you know why? Because it doesn't matter how, how hard you want to run away from the crowds. We are not going to be free from the crowds. Look around us. We are not going to be free from the crowds. Instead, we are going to be surrounded by the crowds. Here's the problem. Do you see them? Jesus saw the crowds. My fear is that if we do not have vest fast enough, the crowds are going to produce more crowds. The crowds are going to produce more crowds. Are going to produce more crowds. Are going to produce more crowds. How many times did I say that already? Five times? 15 million people times five. We do not want that to happen, right? Now here's the question. Where is your crowd? Is your crowd your country that needs to know Jesus? Is your crowd your spouse that needs to know Jesus? Is your crowd your friends, your best friends that need to know Jesus? Is your crowd your students or your professors that need to know Jesus? Is your crowd your boyfriends or girlfriends? Oh, no, no. We're good Wesleyan. No S, right? Is your crowd your boyfriend or girlfriend that needs to know Jesus? Did I say it all? Is your crowd your country that needs to know Jesus? Let's work harder so we all can go home sooner. Let's finish the Lord's mission in this lifetime. Let's finish the Lord's mission in this lifetime. Yes, we can. Yes, it's a possible mission. Not through our strength, not through our power, but through God's strength and power. Brothers and sisters, after all Jesus says, all the power has given to him. It's in us. I have a dream. Maybe my dream is too big. I'm not sure if it's God's dream or my dream. It's too big. That before I die, I want to see the percentage of my people goes up. And every time I see the pictures of my families and friends and relatives and the Cambodian people, I don't just see them as my, peop as my families and friends and my, and my people. I see them as God's precious sons and daughters. I see them as God's precious people. And God is telling me, go and bring them back to me. And go and bring my people back to me. How many, of you, how many of you still have a relative or someone you love so dearly that do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ yet? Let me tell you what. They are not just your relatives. They are not just your brothers. They are not just your sister. They are not just your spouse. They are God's relatives. He's telling us to go and bring them back to me. Why? They are precious to him. Must be honest, humanly speaking, I do not want to go back to Cambodia. You know where I'm from. I do. I do have a right to live here in America. I have a great church, great people. I'm a U.S. citizen now. This is my country. You are all my fellow Americans. But spiritually speaking, I believe that when God saved me, God did not save me for my sake. God saved me so that I can go back to my people to tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. I'm willing to put this life down under the foot of my master and let him use for the glory of his kingdom. Right away after I passed the visa interview to come to the United States, all of my families and friends told me that I'm going, to have bright, I'm going to have a bright future there. I responded to them that, no, my life is already bright when I have Jesus in my heart. My life is already bright when the blood of Jesus Christ transforms me into a new person. My life is already bright when my sins are forgiven. 
And that is the brightest life. I should be proud of myself. And that is the brightest life. We, each one of us, should be proud of ourselves. And now after I informed them that I'm going, to back, I'm going back to Cambodia to serve the Lord, they were all in shock. Open their big eyes and see, what are you thinking? Why are you coming back to a third world country, to an unsecure country, to an unsafe country, to a poor country, to an uneducated country? You know what? I can't do that without Christ's love in me. I can't do that. But Christ's love in me compels me and convicts me to love my own people the more. Christ's love compels and convicts me to love my own people the more. We are humbly asking for your help. We need your prayers and we need your financial support. We ask that if the Lord puts a conviction in your life, we ask that you follow his call and his voice. Support us in sending us to the crowds and to the field that God has put in our lives. Here's one thing I want to guarantee you. I want to know that our fruits will be your fruits. When Cambodian people come to know the Lord, it's because of you have invested in them. It's because of you I pray for them. Can I pray for you all? Father God, thank you for your word today. Thank you for seeing the crowds. Seeing the people that need to know you. Father God, thank you for putting that kind of crowd in our lives so that we can go and share with them about you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you empower us, O oh God, that we can do this. We can reach the crowd. We can tell the crowds about you unless we are empowered by you. I pray in the name of Jesus that, we, that, that you fill us, O oh God, right now with your Holy Spirit, O oh God, so that we can go, O oh God, with power, O oh God, with passion, O oh God, and tell them about you. And that in you, there is hope. Use all of us here, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, that you use all of us here. Pray in the name of Jesus that you bless us today, tomorrow, and tomorrow, and until the day that we see you again. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.